Okay, we're recording. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee meeting. Everybody is welcome to attend and participate, so long as you abide by the antitrust policy and our community code of conduct. Jumping right into the announcements this morning. Um, Salona, do you want to take the first two there? Sure, just letting everyone know that the um, Sao Paulo Brazil boot camp is happening next week. In fact, Rye is in the air. I'll be in the air tomorrow. And um, Dave is flying in this weekend. Um, we ended up having some issues with the venue and some other was in regards to marketing. So we capped attendance at 70 and we'll be reaching that. Um, so, and the um, agenda is actually looking pretty full for the event at this point and that a lot of people stepped forward to do presentations. In fact, it was a, it, so far it looks like it's going to be very active in regards to session leadership. Um, That's fantastic. Thanks. Uh, but it presents a problem for TSC next week and that basically the majority of us will be either having flown in extremely late the Wednesday night before or will be flying at the time that the TSC meeting is next week. So I would like to request that someone um, record the meeting and take notes um, so that my team can sleep and not try to do anything from a plane. <laughs> um, Hart, you're used to kicking recordings off for some of our meetings. Would you be able to kick off a recording? Um, I would love to, but I'm going to be gone next week. Here, I thought I had you pinned down right away, but you were one step ahead of me. Good try, Dan. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Who else is used to uh, kicking that off? Hey, Solana, this is Daniela. One of us on our team can do that as well. Okay. Dan, I, I think Mick is uh, used to this. <laughs> can he do that from a dunk tank? <laughs> I I can do it if... I'd need the host code to do it. That's all. I, I, I got the host code to do it. So I got it. Uh, you got, got it. Plus all right. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Um, and then we we still have the ongoing call for comments for input to the board for 2020 planning. The sooner you get those in, the more likely that we can get the board thinking about those. Uh, and then uh, we're coming up on the 4th of July holiday in the U.S., so I think we'll be canceling the TSC meeting on that day. All right, uh, Salona, you had some uh, traction on the thread that you submitted about uh, chairs or points of contact for projects. Yes, um, so the reason for this is basically I could give y'all a really long list of questions that the CAs handle and take care of in regards to contacting the projects and helping organize a bunch of different things and things of that nature. And as the projects grow, we have a really hard time figuring out who always to talk to for all of the projects and when. And so that this was basically an attempt to formalize it. There was no, the only reason we honestly chose chairs and vice chairs is because that's what we call the work groups and SIGs. Um, there is a precedent in LF projects for projects having this. Um, and I posted some links to some of the ones that I went and found on a Google search. Um, though they don't always call them points of contacts or chairs, they call them like the project lead or a bunch of different other things along those lines that indicate that. And so it was basically the reason our, my team was asking for it is just to facilitate us to help you better so that we knew who to contact because a lot of times um, when we do ask the maintainers um, I feel like they're normally busy coding and such and we don't get responses so that's why we were looking for someone who is more of um, not necessarily a lead developer but a project type person or you know one of the e even one of the other things was the, like a volunteer lead or something along those lines. Um, so that's, that was the point of, about doing that. And because of the fact that it seemed like such a big change, 
that it did seem like something that should be voted upon. But there's a lot of discussion, but I didn't see any clear thread. Um, am I misunderstanding that there is a clear thread and that there is something that someone would want to propose as something that is ready for a vote? Um, I, I don't know that there was a clear thread or not, but but one thing that stuck out to me is it looked like there was a need for a security point of contact, a marketing point of contact, and um, maybe a TSC point of contact. That uh, I guess the latter would be about making sure that the reports get it, get out and any um, decisions that come from the TSC get back in, into the project. So I think that maybe something along the lines of, of listing those points of contact on the wiki or something uh, should maybe satisfy that. W were there other sorts of points of contact needs? Well, so th there are. Um, there's a lot in regards to documentation, certifications, um, things of that nature, uh, and just general where to go, especially on some of the larger projects in that people come in and they're like, we don't know exactly where to go and find things and who to ask and who we who should be um, in charge of those things. And so that's why, you know, we were asking for something kind of generalized. And Dave mentioned that he maintains already a set of security contacts for, um, for each of the projects. Um, I think I think in the spirit of trying to be minimal, um, you know, you could always have on a, on a web page for for a project. You know, here's other people to talk to if you have questions about documentation or something like that, right? Um, other people who could be volunteer points of contact. Uh, we're just trying to, in terms of um, you know, kind of formal tracking and just trying to make sure it's something that each project has. You know, uh, if one if it was one POC per project, there might be just enough uh, minimum viable governance <laughs> or minimum viable uh, structure. You know. Well, questions should be going to like the mail list or the rocket chat, right? You don't, you well, don't want to designate to one person because that person will get swamped. And oh, absolutely. We always try to direct people to those those lists. It's just sometimes, sometimes they do. They go on a list and they ask a question and they don't hear a question. Not that this point of contact needs to be somebody chartered with answering every question that goes unanswered. Um, but I, I, you know, it's still still sometimes it, it feels like there's a, a lack of a human. I don't know. <clears throat> Well, and right. this is something we found with the indie project is often you'll want to ask a question to see what the status of something is, or maybe ask the community architects to for a request of some someplace to put something or some infrastructure. And if we have a point of contact like it was described, it helps make sure that there's not you know any phishing attempts going on or that the the general consensus amongst the maintainers isn't undermined by some, one of those kinds of requests because it that person can help point things back to the right mailing lists and make sure that all the maintainers are aware of what's going on. I'm confused. So is the point of contact, everybody on the planet can use that or? I mean, again, I think, you know, as Mark said, the mailing lists are, that's what they're there for. I mean, the security contact makes tons of sense because they have a specific role. They're vetting security vulnerabilities. And then they're managing the vulnerability through the life cycle. That's a very different thing than somebody that's just, uh, again, I, I don't, don't really quite understand what we're trying to accomplish here. <clears throat> Is anybody from the uh, marketing committee on that could speak to the needs for a marketing contact? So let me ask a question a bit differently. I mean, how do you suggest that we identify those people? How would we describe their role and ask for volunteers? So I can give you an example. It's Marta here. 
Um, just a few days ago, we were contacted by CoinDesk. It was clear that they don't quite understand Hyperledger and uh, we needed to clarify some things and the re reporter became very responsive and now is asking if he could interview some maintainers to understand a better to get a better understanding of uh, all of the projects and ask some questions and feature us and so on so of course you know we try to keep uh, to keep up to date community architects are keeping up to date but Having someone who is that point of contact, for instance, for that would be wonderful for that's, each respective project. I mean, that, that's kind of the role of the TSC chair. You're trying to give me more work. Yeah, well, yeah. I think, <laughs> but I mean, I didn't. <laughs> Just kidding. I think there's a follow up question <laughs> specific to a project. And you could go to a mailing list publicly and say, hey, there's a reporter from. From a from the uh, you know newspaper who wants to to do a story uh, and uh, you know that's that's fine but sometimes you uh, want to go to an individual and and kind of those of us who've been around some of these projects for a long time would know to go to certain individuals who uh, you know who know that part of their job is kind of advocacy to folks like that um, but I think there's been a, a few times we've gone to lists and uh, everyone's been busy um, that's just human nature that's fine sometimes when three people are responsible for a thing. Um, you know, you kind of get less engagement than if one person is, and I know they can, de you know, delegate out to the other three, you know. Um, not that that one person has to answer uh, uh, every, you know, need themselves entirely and bear that burden on their back. Um, uh, yeah. So Sawtooth has adopted a governance structure from Rust, and there's separate teams broken out um, that that are sort of discipline based, and that might be another model to take a look at for the larger projects. Um, I, I am hearing still though there's there's two or three rules that need points of contact, security, marketing, and then I'm not clear if there's a, a, another one for. Uh, TSC matters or something like that. Maybe that's really just all the maintainers. How how does the hyperledger staff view this role compared to like a chair on a prom working group or SIG? We were looking at it as a similar perspective. Like normally, if we want to know something about interoperability, or someone comes up and says hey, um, we're doing this paper on blah, 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 who do we talk to? One of the things we sit there and do is we're like, oh, you should go talk to the chair of the scale and performance because this is a scale and performance issue and they can probably point you towards some of those topics as to what's going on here at Hyperledger. And so we do stuff like that all of the time. Um, the hard part becomes when it becomes a project, we don't always know exactly who to do it, who to ask for it. And sometimes think, you know, so we can either send it to the entire list, which sometimes isn't appropriate, or we can try to cherry pick certain individuals, but then sometimes people's feelings get hurt that they were not the person picked. Um, and it becomes also where some of the stuff is so specific that even when we generally, if we can generally post it to the list, it still also doesn't get responses. Um, a lot of this has to do with, honestly, the lack of responses and then the fact that the CAs literally go and chase down individuals to get things done. And so things that shouldn't take a huge amount of our time can become incredibly time consuming. And we can't be, quickly responsive to any of those people who are coming in with those requests. Okay, so generally all technical quests go to chat or the mailing list and, and the communities should be handling that as best they can. Um, but I'm hearing on individual it's, it's marketing. It's not really always technical requests, Dan. Like if someone has you know a normal question question, yeah, we send them to chat or we send them to the mailing list. Honestly, we send them to chat the majority of the time because we found chat to be more responsive than the mailing list. But um, these are like broader questions than that. Um, you know, it's like a company going, we're thinking of using blah, 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 should we? 
um, and or uh, I'm doing a paper on blah blah blah. Who should we talk to? Or um, we need to work on something like certifications, or um, we get training, uh, or we need to validate that you know we're doing something with the press but we need to validate that the technology is correct inside of it and maybe it's diverse projects or you know there's, there's just a really wide swath of things that end up happening yeah so the the things that i heard in that that might require more individualized responses are requests from the press where you need one or two people engaged there uh, so that makes sense to me most of the other questions sound like questions to the maintainers. Or to the TSC, right? I mean, you know, something like interoperability is not a project thing. It's, it's something that we should be addressing from the TSC or the TSC chair. I mean, I, there's not just one individual that's gonna know, necessarily know all these things anyway. And so, you know, I think it may, it may make sense. In fact, it probably does make sense that a project identified from a marketing perspective, who do we talk to? But even then, it's going to be a little bit dicey because if you have projects that are, you know, uh, truly diverse, then you have to be careful that, you know, whoever it is that you're reaching out to isn't going to be necessarily putting, you know, their own company spin on it and so forth. So that's, that's obviously something that you, you probably want to have actually multiple contacts. Um, and it, but again, I think that that you know, and 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 maybe we can ask that that be part of you know when you try and establish a project, who do we talk to from a marketing and PR and analyst perspective, right? Is that uh, that that person may not actually be a maintainer? I can appreciate that, but that's that's a different story than uh, again, you know, so some of the questions are coming in are of a technical nature. Some of them are really the TSC chair and and uh, or members or, or just bring it to the TSC and you know then we can figure out who maybe needs to talk to yeah okay I think I think if the TSC if the TSC feels strongly right now that, that they'd rather not vote to have a point of contact um, recognized as a, as a as something between the TOC, TSC and the projects or some other official part of the infrastructure that's fine I mean we'll just continue to take issues that are inbound either to the maintainers or the TSC as we see appropriate um, or just internally amongst the CA staff, try to maintain a sense of, well, who on a given project tends to be most responsive to our queries, um, and, uh, and we'll just go from there. And maybe there's just one other footnote here. It's, it sounds like with the larger projects having lots of repos, uh, each project should probably already have a maintainer's file, but maybe it's not clear across the many repos because you're going to have um, <clears throat> different subsets of maintainers. But I would think that each project tends to have like a core uh, repository and and uh, people can check me on this, but I'm thinking that the maintainers listed in that core repository is probably the, the best single source of identifying the the current set of maintainers for that project. Yep. <clears throat> And, you know, I, again, I mean, that's one of the things that actually, you know, I put in my note and that is maybe we should, um, you know, make it a sort of a policy or, uh, you know, a best practice to have, I mean, and just about every one of them does. I think I only found two or three that didn't actually have a maintainer's file, um, uh, but have a maintainer's file that lists who the maintainers are and gives their contact information would be, I, I'm, I'm fully supportive of that making sure that those people are easily found at the top level repo or in the wiki for that matter. Okay, well, I don't think we need to belay the point. Um, we can move on, um, it sounds like. It sounds like there's strong opposition to it, so um, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll manage. Okay. Um, Hopefully still some, some good outcomes from that discussion on clarifying roles and responsibilities. Uh, moving on to the life cycle committee updates. Uh, Arno, I kind of put you on point for this. Uh, looking right now for just sort of a feeling of how things are going and whether you feel like you can predict some sort of yeah. end date. Can you hear me well? Yes. 
Okay. So, yeah. So, we have set up a wiki page. We have invited everybody to go and uh, list issues they thought we were to tackle. And uh, we kind of, I waited a little bit, took a little bit of time. And then I decided to try and move the ball forward by pushing forward with a bunch of proposals for resolving those issues. Uh, admittedly, some of them were kind of blunt and maybe to extent, to a certain extent provocative maybe in some, in some ways, but um, it did get some reaction. I have to say, using the wiki has been a bit of a challenge. I tried to not get to have uh, schedule calls. I think we already have too many calls. At least that's my case. So I wasn't really keen on having more calls and trying to figure out the time slot that would work for everybody. But uh, using the wiki, quite frankly, is a bit of a pain. And uh, inline comments, we started with that. That doesn't really work. And uh, to my to my dismay, I have to share with everybody that inline comments are a pain in the butt. You can't have them all open, visible, and there is a very long-standing open issues against Confluence Wiki, and they have no plans to solve it anytime soon. So everybody is crying about this, but they don't seem to care. So anyway, we are using comments against the page itself, so they're all at the bottom. And I've tried to organize things based on issues so we can have a threaded discussion. But um, it's been the response has been. I would say fairly mild. Some people, as you would expect, are pretty vocal, others not so much. So my plan is to uh, try to take another path at the at the proposed resolution based on the input that was already, you know, uh, shared by some of the, the members, and um, and try to see if those proposed resolutions work better. Some of the ones that I put forward were rejected by different people or amended in different ways. So the plan is to have another go at it. In terms of the timeline, because I know and I understand the need to try to, you know, basically set some target, that's much harder to do, honestly. But uh, uh, my, my goal is to not try to solve everything and get back to the TSC with the whole list of issues resolved or proposed results but uh, to try to find some of the ones we can at least agree on and bring those up to the TSC for approval by the TSC, because all of that is, of course, you know, just legwork for the TSC. The TSC holds the final decision on any of those. And uh, we may also have some discussion in the TSC when we come with our proposed resolution. But so, I, realistically speaking, you know, I think in two weeks from now or three now, if the fourth of July canceled, quite understandably, uh, we I'm hoping we can have at least the first batch of proposed resolutions. Okay, that's great progress, and it does look like quite a bit of work to have tried to organize that conversation. He's been doing and a great if job. You know, thank you. But if, if anybody wants to see what's up, I mean, as I said, it's on the wiki. Everybody has access to the wiki. So uh, you know, feel free to, to pick in and see what, and, and contribute if you want. I wonder if it would help at all to try to split those resolutions onto separate pages and then have um, the comments at each one of those pages. Yeah, so quite frankly, that's part of the challenge is everybody has their own way of wanting to address this. And, you know, I try to split them. The next one answers several of them together. And it's hard to keep everything organized. So I don't know what the best structure from a wiki point of view would be. It's part of the experiment is <laughs> to try to use the wiki as effectively as possible and uh, have some kind of convention among the group, right? For those of you out there who do use wikis a lot, and and that incorporates a lot of commentary and such, I mean, wikis are great as kind of, uh, I think, documentation tools, but uh, uh, don't necessarily sell themselves as like uh, brainstorming tools so much as well. But for those of you who do use wiki and uh, wikis and other tools at the same time, what are like the best tools for that? And, and what are some processes that you'd recommend? Um. 
Salona here. I would recommend uh, what Dan said about breaking each issue into a page because we've also got the feature in regards to polls and some other different things. And a lot of the features wiki-wise are normally per page um, because that's how they normally consider it to be about how to break out. Um, Arnold, I can show you easily how to make sure that that first page is a, an automatically maintained directory of all the child pages so that you don't have to worry about keeping them in sync or anything along those lines. If you wanted to go over what some of those features are, I could um, help you organize a little better. All right, sounds good. So just grab it. I'm happy machine. to try. I mean, okay. Okay, well, great. Thanks for the update and for everybody who's uh, contributing on evolving the process there. Uh, moving on to Caliper. Do we have a uh, maintainer or contributor from Caliper to take questions? Okay, sounds like we probably don't have somebody to take questions, so maybe we can um, leave Caliper on the docket for another week uh, in case uh, there's other questions to be satisfied here. Uh, I did throw one on just now looking for checking that we've got alignment between Caliper and PSWG. I think we want to make sure that, that the uh, metric definitions and so forth are, are well aligned. I think since maybe since we don't have somebody live to ask question to answer questions now, please make sure that if you do have questions on their update that that gets onto the wiki and we can handle those asynchronously. I know a lot of the the contributors for Caliper are um, uh, in a time zone that's probably not convenient with this with this meeting. All right, and then um, let's see here. When I was looking at the uh, calendar of upcoming reports, uh, there is also a report due from Quilt. Uh, I have reached out to the Quilt. Uh, yeah, actually, it looks like Caliper was a week early in getting their, their report out, so maybe that's why they're not here today to uh, answer questions. But it uh, looks like Quilt is overdue. Uh, I've sent a note to the... Uh, maintainers and most active contributor that I saw on that project to see uh, what their status is, but we haven't had an update from them for a couple of quarters now. And so I think we need to start thinking about where this falls into the life cycle. Uh, we don't have a specific proposal right now, but I think it's something that the TSC members should start thinking about so that we can have a discussion about that if we need to make a resolution within the next, uh, the next few weeks here. So Quilt's in the middle of a rebooting process, which is why they're not doing the reports yet. And there's been some different things that Brian and I have been trying to address in regards to that before there's an official report out. Okay. Um, so I guess that's the report. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, the report with Quilt right now is the, the only people that you'll see is the ILP people but um, we're working right now to figure out how to make Quilt be more about generalized interoperability, which was the original proposal. And in fact, there's meetings about that um, that are currently happening. Yeah, I guess in, in general, I think when we have a project that may have run its course, I don't think it's a bad thing for that project to follow that life cycle through and be end of life. And if there's similar work coming in that, you know, wants to be created as a project that we see a regular project proposal for it uh, with a new set of maintainers, or if there's an overlapped set of maintainers, 
but I think that we shouldn't be afraid to shut things down. That seems to be a part of a healthy life cycle that we're going to have things that graduate and things that don't graduate. Hey, Dan, this is Tracy. Hey, this is Dave here. Uh, oh. So I'll go, go first, for it, Tracy. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so Accenture is looking to bring in some of the interoperability work that they've done, and they were, think, were thinking about bringing it to Quilt. Um, so based on what you just said, should we be instead thinking about putting together a project proposal? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think if there's a collection of interoperability things that would want to be an amalgam, then, then getting that as part of the project proposal is appropriate, or if it's a standalone project uh, with, with just that individual interoperability piece, then that's also good. Uh, and I think that the some of the direction that I see in the project lifecycle discussion is getting code into a lab first. And that might be another precursor if, if your work isn't already in the lab. I mean, what we were, what, what we were talking about doing with um, the Accenture stuff and some other stuff coming in was coming back to the TSC with a proposal that was essentially, you know, uh, something that was substantive enough for a vote. Um, that I, I would say, here's a collection of code. Um, it is, we're all still at an incubator stage, right? It's, it's why Quilt is still in the incubator. There wasn't a question of kind of getting things into a, um, a non-incubator status that should still be considered an incubator. Also, it's definitely not about removing the TSC's role as an approval step in uh, kind of being a gateway, uh, I'm sorry, being a gate, gating factor for um, new code as it comes in. Um, so well, the idea is we'd come and we'd say, here are, uh, basically, you know, two or three additional kind of pieces that that play together in the same way that, say, the pieces of Ursa play together. Um, they're kind of thematically connected. Um, they're at the same level of maturity, perhaps, as Quilt, as the existing ILP Java implementation, which is all that we know of as Quilt today. And that having them together still benefits from whatever brand equity we might have put behind Quilt as a as an interoperability. Um, thing the same way that Ursa is kind of where we're parking, you know, um, shared shared security library, um, and that, that helps prevent some bloat uh, or not bloat is not the right word, but you know, creating too many new top, top level projects for those who might be concerned about you know kind of this car effect at that level, right? Um, so <clears throat> that's that's a preview. We weren't ready to to, to I think make a proposal on, on that front yet. Um, I and I mean, this was also some of the subtext of the thing was if you have an amalgam project like Ursa, um, somebody who's wrote these different think about how to represent them for them to the organization and such might be easier to you know cast out for different. I, I don't know if it's my uh, audio uh, inbound or your body uh, audio outbound, but I, I'm having uh, trouble making you out. Uh, yeah, me too. It's very long. Me too. Uh, but. Okay, we, we caught some of those syllables, Brian. Um, <laughs> Got every third syllable, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, not good. I, I think <clears throat> it sounds like a good discussion, probably a, uh, a good part of the life cycle discussion that, that Arno is leading. Uh, from from my perspective, if it's mostly about branding that we've we've got some brand behind uh, uh, behind something like quilt or maybe it's composer, uh, that's that's maybe where we want to think about how are we using the incubator the way that we want to use the incubator uh, because it, it should be okay for projects to go away. We shouldn't. I don't think like that we should be too concerned about uh, building a lot of brand equity in, in incubated projects. And uh, the, uh, yeah, I know, that, that's probably enough for now, but. Yeah, I'm kind of in agreement with that, Dan. I think projects should follow their own course. If people lose interest and they you know they go away that's that's the way the cookie crumbles but if something's coming in from the outside and we're going to try and do a lift you know lift and shift kind of a thing i'm not sure i i think that should go through the, the regular process 
Yeah, I would be against the lift and shift. I mean, if it comes in and it <clears throat> enhances what's already there in quilt and, and fits in, then it should become right. a part of quilt. But if it's like, we'll throw this out, put this in and call it the same thing, that's All right. That's not the way to go. Yeah, uh, just from, from the perspective of what we're looking at, um, you know, obviously when quilt was brought into the into Hyperledger and the technical steering committee voted on it, right? There was some concerns about making it a wider interoperability sort of project. And so uh, when we were considering at Accenture bringing in the work that we've been doing, um, it made sense that it, it fit into Quilt. But if, if what we're saying now is that it makes more sense to bring it in separately, um, that's fine. I just, I wanna make sure I'm following the right processes. And so that's why I brought the question up. Hey, yeah. Tracy. Thanks, for um, Tracy. Didn't you yeah. invent the process, Tracy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think the process was in place before I showed up. <laughs> just out of curiosity, do you know when you'll have a document on that? Uh, so, I guess not all you have to start working on that document, Hart. Um, based on the conversations that I had, I didn't actually realize I needed to put together something. Um, oh, no separate worries. because I did think I was just bringing it into quilt. So I will work on that uh, with the team, and we'll um, we'll get that in place. We're we're just about through all the processes internally, and so um, this is a good conversation to have come up now. Good. Yeah, I th I think that a if the maintainers on a project are still active and they want to welcome in a more breadth in the functionality or scope, then that's a different situation than if the maintainers have sort of dwindled away and they're not active in a project anymore. Then it, in that latter case, it really feels to me more like uh, new code should be a new project. The maintainers? Yeah, so it's, it's a bit about both, right? Because when we had the conversations with Adrian um, and uh, the other name is escaping me at the moment. But when we had the conversations with the maintainers of Quilt, um, they were definitely, you know, looking forward to having more, um, more being contributed, right? And so that's kind of why, you know, that's the process that we had went through, right? Talking to them first because it made sense. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's just a, a matter of making sure everybody's on the same page and doing the right thing. Yep. Okay, um, that is the end of our official agenda here. Uh, since we've got just a, a little bit of time, if there's any opens, we can, uh, we can take those quickly. Otherwise, uh, we will wrap up for the day. So um, I saw that one of the SIGs is putting out a white paper. And I didn't know since that is outside the purview of the TSC. Um, I just didn't know if there needs to be some better coordination or review or whatever. Um, don't know how other TSC members feel about that. Hey, Mark, can I comment? This is Daniela. Um, we are aware of that. We've actually, um, uh, had been working with Bobby from uh, the development and training uh, working group to make sure that the template was done. Um, and we're advising or even the point of contact on the telecom SIG, which is David Boswell on the ecosystems team is working with Vipin and the rest. Uh, that white paper is an interesting one because they're also working with the technical leads in the LF networking um, uh, project, the Linux Foundation Networking Project. So we are aware of it. Uh, Salona and I actually and the team spent some time talking about putting together, there's a template, there's a white paper template that um, Bobby and the rest of that um, a working group, technical working group that falls under TSC has put together to put together some more guidelines around uh, the white paper. So we are aware of it. Um, we have a draft. We're reviewing it. We'll get back to the, the TSC and particularly the learning and developments uh, working group um, around what things we think are important to make sure that we're using the right language um, and um, have the right standards and review process. So we will get, um, I actually, we, we discussed this yesterday um, and we were going to put it on hopefully for next week's so the week after is TSC call. 
but happy to answer any additional questions that um, the TSU has. Yeah, so this did come up uh, in the uh, governing board meeting, uh, just, I think it was this week. And my position is that the SIGs are outside the, it's outside their scope to generate work products, that if they're going to generate work products, then that those need to go through the, the governance process that we have established for the TSC. And so we've, we've probably created a little bit of an awkward situation in moving the SIGs out from underneath the TSC and finding that there is some interest there in generating uh, work products. Uh, but I think we want to make sure that those stay uh, clearly under proper governance and community development. Yeah, to be clear, the SIGs are creating work products and are hoped that they would uh, create quite a bit from uh, white papers to uh, uh, blog posts to uh, use cases on a wiki, uh, you know, all sorts of, you know, uh, non-coding things, non, not, they're not creating software. Um, the hope is that if they do that, they, they come in through the ordinary process, you know, into a lab or into a, a project proposal. Um, and I think uh, whenever they, they are making technical uh, kinds of uh, things that could be interpreted as a, some sort of official position uh, of hyperliteracy, then, then that makes a ton of sense to bring to the TSC for, for input and make sure it's accurate. Um, if it's something that describes policy, I don't think they're really, they're not deciding policy for any of the technical projects at, at Hyperledger. So, um, and if they were to recommend one, it obviously makes sense to bring it to the TSC. But, uh, you know, the kinds of content they bring are, are you know, it's, it's about, I think, all the things that we'd agree upon are useful anyways to have. So, uh, um, yeah, I think, I think the TSC has always been kind of approached when there's been uh, appropriate appropriate thing. So, um, and if we want a more uh, uh, interesting policy than that, let's let's talk about it offline and bring something back. Yeah, I, I think if they're going to generate any sort of technical product that has to go through either a technical working group or a technical coding project. Is a, is a blog post a technical product? No, I think we've been pretty free form with uh, blog posts that anybody can submit a blog post. And uh, I guess it's sort of at the discretion of Hyperledger marketing, whether those go up. Okay. And if you want we to call something technical like, reviews. I think, I think it's fair to say. Do. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I just wanted to make one quick point that we do. Uh, technical reviews of technical blog posts. They, I do them all the time. They get sent to me quite often, actually, and Rye and other um, developers in the project. If they're very specific to a project, we tend to loop in, you know, people who could review them. A lot of times, the technical blog posts are coming from developers in the projects, and we just do a quick pass. Be like, yep, looks good, right? Um, and it's mostly around just cleaning up language and, and making sure it aligns with existing policy and things like that. And we'd love more help with that if, uh, if somebody wants to volunteer to help with that. It just tends to be time critical, you know, hey, this like, we'd, we'd like to put this up sometime this week, you know, can we get technical review? So that's more than, something we're more than happy to, to put input on. And I, I think, as I was going to say, I agree, if you call something a white paper, uh, asking that that be something that the technical steering committee has had a chance to provide input to and uh, approve, uh, I mean, sure, I, I, I think that's fine. It's just the all work product thing. I just wanted, if you, if we want to get into that conversation, let's let's talk and bring something back to the TSC. Yeah, it sounds like we're similarly aligned on that. Things that sound official, like white papers, should go through governance, and things that are a little less formal, like a blog post, can kind of stay the course. That's all pretty reasonable. All right. Well, we got one extra item in. Uh, Mark, you had something. I was going to say, as Daniela, you know, eloquently put, she was going to write something up and, uh, you know, bring it up for discussion in a week or two. So we should probably see. On see the screen, I'm showing the wiki page as to where all of this is being documented. Where they've been working on it. If you, I know many of y'all don't have the ability to view the screen, but that's where it's all being worked upon. Okay, well that's that's interesting because the uh, the working groups presumably would want to be aware of or follow that that process. So that sounds like a good 
point of uh, collaboration and discussion amongst the, the working groups as well. Maybe that's a proposal in and of itself that, that should get circulated here at the TSC. If we're going to so stand I was going to say something like that. Maybe we just need some form of notification to the TSC. Hey, we're planning to post this. You know, let us know if you have any issues. By default, you assume everybody's okay with it, but at least, you know, people have a chance to interject if they feel like it. Yeah, the publication thing gets really hazy. I mean, if you write a research paper that mentions Hyperledger, do you have to get that approved by the TSC too? If you're going to put something out that is under the Hyperledger brand, then it needs to go through Hyperledger processes, and those might be marketing ones if it's purely marketing content, and if it's technical content, uh, this is the governance body for that. So how do we define... Uh... Okay. But you could... You could conceivably do a performance report on URSA libraries and put that out. I mean, you know, we don't go tell the researchers they can't put something out, right? The fast fabric paper, they... Right, so, it, just, it just becomes nebulous, but, like Mike Lauder and I wrote a blog post about URSA. Is that like Hyperledger or not? Did you put it out on a Hyperledger no. yeah, website? Was it on yeah, I was going to on your Hyperledger medium. website, or was it a Hyperledger claim about something? I mean, you right, can make the claim exactly. something you want, but okay. Hyperledger cannot make a claim without the Gotcha. Two. Right. So, I mean, maybe we need to formalize that so that technical blogs or, you know, they get posted by Hyperledger or papers, for that matter, or reviewed. I think, you know, I think this, brought, this was brought up previously when we were talking to um, the smart contracts, uh, going through the smart contracts uh, working group review last week, and that, and in fact, it looks like we, there is a sort of a loophole in the sense that we didn't explicitly say that, you know, a work group would bring forward its stuff, and maybe we need to codify that. That you know, deliverables that are going to be published by Hyperledger coming out of a working group or a SIG should be, if they're technical in nature should be reviewed by the TSC. So, I mean, I know we're getting towards the end of the call, but I'd be, I'd be happy to write a proposal for that. Yeah, we're, I think we're all in agreement on that. And I think that's been um, how we've done things in the past, right? Yes, the right, because you're not reading down anywhere. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that's the slide that, uh, the thing that Salome just posted the link to is white paper standards. And I think we just make sure that white paper standards, part of that is, you know, submission to for, or, you know, early on for feedback and, and, and you know, co-creation and invitation, right, all that sort of thing, and then later on for review and then for final approval. And that's, um, yeah, worth restating, worth uh, clarifying, worth making part of the uh, official standard and, and worth, and, that, and I think to everybody's point, calling something the paper, you know, is perhaps that's where, that's where there's an officialness to it, that for, you know, um, individual messages and wiki pages you don't have. And I think even blog posts, because when we put blog posts up, we put them under people's names, you know, um, they're not anonymous. They're not, you know, Moses coming down from the the, the, the mountain with, you know, 10 commandments. Um, uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, this is Hart's take on, um, you know, what he's done with performance on this project, you know, and it's his name attached to that. Um, and so, I, uh, you know, we keep those kind of personal named and if there's errors in them, we certainly would correct them quickly uh, as you can do with a blog post. You don't tend to want to do with a paper, right? Yeah, there might actually be some inconsistency there. I think a lot of times they just go out posted as by Hyperledger, even if the article itself says by Hart or whomever. Probably just some nuance with uh, the way those web pages get generated. Okay. Certainly the intent is, I mean, when we put them out just by Hyperledger, that would be um, the ones that are, are more official. But okay, yeah, we'll look at that. Make sure I, I'm consistent. guessing it's whoever clicks the publish button, the, the WordPress stuff just automatically tags it that way. I, I don't think it's anything direct. Okay. But, okay, well, I think this, uh, this conversation has run its course for right now. So we'll go ahead and wind up for today. Thanks for the good discussion from everybody and continue to uh, update the uh, various um, wiki pages that we have on these topics that we have discussed. And thanks again for the contributions. 
See ya. Thank you. Thanks.